2% whole milk or cream. This is about like just regular whole milk, okay? So now what we're going to do, I'm going to get all my tiles laid out. I'm going to get my cups. We're going to line up 10 cups, okay? We're going to mark on them one like that so we can see it real easy. One, two, three, four, five, like that. Then I'm going to line my tiles up. Uh, I got a porcelain, a white stoneware, and a dark stoneware. It's always good to have three bodies so you can see what the glaze does on with sort of like three canvases. The next thing you're going to want to do is get some, this is iron oxide, and you're going to write on the bottom of this. You're going to write your initials like J B 1. Okay? So I did that on these. I wrote on all the bottoms. 1 and here I wrote two, like that. So that way when we get 600 tiles out of a glaze batch, it's much easier to turn them over, grab all your initials, they could be a smiley face, could be an X, could be anything. Then you line those up and it's real easy to sort them. Otherwise the numbering can become confusing. I've got numbers on the top, which I, I like to use also as a secondary test because uh, I mean not as a, as a secondary way to identify them because sometimes things stick to the bottom sometimes the iron oxide you don't put it on thick enough it, it kind of ghosts away uh, other times uh, so either way so you've got that number sometimes glaze will drip from the top down onto that and obscure it so that gives you a double way to do it all right so once we have all those I write them in a book and I will write, you know, the glaze, the glaze, uh, test one, and then put my, put my tiles on, uh, write the numbers down, and do all that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is to pour the glaze in. Now, with these cups, these are solo you know, party cups, beer cups, whatever, there's a line right here. This line is about 100 grams, and you can see it on the inside. So what I'll normally do is just go th with this and pour up to that line approximately. And I'll go all the way down here and pour. And I'll keep going all the way. Till I, and then if I, at the end I have a little left, I'll pour a little more in each cup. But what that's effectively doing is we've got approximately 100 grams in every cup. And so now we're going to do our colorant blend. Um, so we'll do our, what our colorants will say is 1% of red iron oxide that I need to put in this cup. 1% of 100 is 1 gram. Don't make the mistake that you, we've made 1,000 grams and now you're going to put in 10 grams. You have to th rethink this through. Each cup is going to be a very small amount of colorant. If you do more than you know 5%, you've probably got too much. Okay? So 5 grams meaning. So then we'll go back to our scale, we'll reset it. Sometimes I take on this piece of paper and I'll put that in there and I'll balance it with that paper. And then I'll take my iron, like in this case I got red iron oxide, and I would, you know, put that on there. I'm just going to just sort of estimate it for you. Say that's one gram of red iron, which is about right. Now I've got that in a piece of paper. I can set that aside. I can... Uh, do, I can put it right on the, behind them and do all my colorants, or I can just put it in right now. Okay? Then what I'm going to do is get out my blender again. I'm going to mix that. Now you have to mix that uh, fairly good because if you don't mix it well, it'll be we'll have spotty tests. So just go like this. See how I'm moving, I'm moving it up and down. I sort of keep my hand over the cup so it doesn't spray too bad. Okay, now what you've got to do is dip your tile. So what you do when you dip a tile, you, you want your tile to look like this when you're done. See how it has three distinct lines. First coat, second coat, and third coat. So you can see that there's a textural dimension there. So the way that occurs is I usually will take my cup and spin it like this to make sure everything's mixed good. Then I'll hold my first one in for re just real quick and let it stand there. Now you can probably watch this dry. Watching glaze dry is uh, really fun. 
And so you just exercise patience. Okay, so now that's all dry. You can see that it's not doesn't look moist anymore. I can touch it. Now I'm going to hold it in just below this line for like 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. That's about what I'm going to do. And then I'll let it drip off and just wait. Now that's going to take a minute. So normally what I'll do is I'll, I'll do all mine with one coat. I'll just go down the line, do one coat, do two coats, and then come back for the three coats. So you're not standing there waiting for each coat to dry. So I would set this aside and do another one. Okay, so then my final coat will be just at the top. And then I hold it in there for a second. And there we go. Another method you can do uh, that makes a lot of sense is instead of going straight across on the top with the third coat, uh, what will happen if it's a runny glaze, it will run it and obscure all, all of that. So, But if I do it on a corner, like this. Now you can see that only my third coat is on this side. Here's one, two, and three. And you usually will have some area where you have one coat. It's very good to be able to see the thin, medium, and thick of this method because then you can identify a lot of different glaze colors in there. Okay? I think I got everything there for you. So let's uh, run that test and I'll get back with you on the next one. All right, thank you.